with LinkedIn, really. And today our presenter is Alan Paulette. Uh He basically is an SEO consultant, and he has been doing this for 14 years. So uh, definitely has a lot of history on doing this. Uh, the nice thing is actually I've used him in the past, and uh, he is great at what he does. In fact, I was looking at some of the tips and tricks that he's going to show us today, and within five minutes I became the number one ranked in my area on LinkedIn because I listened to him. So he has worked in many different industries, and uh, welcome, Alan. We're looking forward to learning something new today. Well, thanks for having me on the show. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, I've been doing this for uh, for 14 years, uh, but uh, LinkedIn, I, you know, I was one of the first uh, adopters of LinkedIn, and I, I think it's one of the best. I almost think it's better than SEO for uh, generating business for uh, for businesses. It's it's just amazing. Um, so, uh, do you want me to give you a quick overview of the history of LinkedIn, or do you want me to just yeah, catch perfect. the chase? Yeah, okay. So, um, so LinkedIn was formed in 2002. Um, it has about 200 million users, um, which kind of puts it in the same level as Twitter. Uh, Twitter has about 5 million uh, or half a billion uh, users, but most of them are like duplicate profiles. Like you know, you can create hundreds of profiles. I have over 20 personally on Twitter. So. Twitter, you can create multiple profiles, so one person could be multiple users. So, really, that half a million is probably more like like 100 million, so or 200 million. So on LinkedIn, though, it's each profile is a real person because it's it's just like your resume on 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 the web. So that was the goal of uh, LinkedIn. The founder of LinkedIn, he was trying to make a place where you could create your Create a profile about your business experience and past and resume, and he wanted to create a place where people could engage each other on a business level. Um, there's lots of social sites that are, you know, for fluff and for celebrity and uh, for sports, but this is only about business, and that's what makes LinkedIn such a great business tool because it's it's meant for business. So that's. The quick rundown. Um, recently, actually, um, LinkedIn has changed its um, its target. It's trying to now compete with uh, Monster and uh, Jobs, uh, all the job websites. It's trying to become not only uh, a business B two B connection place, but it's trying to be a portal for people looking for jobs. And uh, and recruiting people. So the the point of uh, LinkedIn is it's it's trying to become every every kind of resource possible for business. Um, as a result, about 60% of all jobs online are found through LinkedIn, uh, which makes <laughs> which means that it's it's the number one stop for uh, finding people, uh, finding professionals for your business. Or for connecting with other businesses, it's the the place to be on the web. So um, I want to just give a little bit of uh, explanation of why to use LinkedIn and how to use it for each 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 type of individual. So as an entrepreneur, um, using LinkedIn is a great way to get your profile out there, uh, to list out your services that you do. Uh, and to connect with other entrepreneurs that are interested in doing business together. Um, as a so, like a, as an SEO professional, um, I don't provide all the services that I need to do in order to build a website, to manage a website. I, I, there, there are tasks that I don't really like doing as web design. I'm not a great designer. So LinkedIn allows me to find other professionals that I can engage with and create a, basically a, a virtual business online. I engage with all these people, and they, they bring their talents to the, to the plate. And then when I approach businesses, I can actually have like a whole bunch of different uh, offerings that makes me a complete package for for my clients. So that's one great thing about LinkedIn. You can engage the people that have the skills that can offset yours. Um, also, you can engage people who are very similar minded. 
So I engage other SEOs through LinkedIn. We share ideas on how to better game the search engines. <laughs> so it's, it's a really great tool that way. Um, now for employers, uh, LinkedIn is another great tool. So if you're a small business owner or mid-sized business owner and you're looking for talent, it's a really great resource because the people that are on LinkedIn are generally the, the decision makers, the, the, the high-end professionals, the, the white collar, or um, the, the, the higher caliber people on uh, LinkedIn. There's about uh, 20 million people that are active uh, every day on um, LinkedIn that are, that are just North American based. So that's a huge number of people. And, and they're, so when you engage them, you know that they're going to engage you back. Uh, these people are eager to uh, you know, do business. So you're going to find that when you find uh, employees on, um, on LinkedIn, you're going to get a better response rate that you're going to be able to encourage them to, uh, to come into your business possibly. Um, the great thing is also because it is a resume related site, you can see everything that these people have done as long as they update their profile. Most people are pretty good about updating their profile. So the, you can see a real history of what this person has done. Um, and that's, that's really good as an employer. You're trying to find out wh how good is, really is this person so that you can hire the best people for your company. As an employee, if you're, if you're looking for work, well, it's, it's a great place because of the fact that most of the people that are on uh, LinkedIn are the decision makers, and they will, they're the ones that are hiring. A lot of recruiters uh, use LinkedIn for, uh, for finding people to uh, place in, within businesses. Uh, personally, I get about five, five job offers a day from LinkedIn just because of being one of the top people in my field. So it's, it's kind of cool. I mean, I always have to turn these jobs down, but you know, it's kind of cool to, <laughs> to get all these job offers, um, especially when you know, considering everyone thinks, oh, the market is really, really slow uh, in the U.S. and Canada. Um, but on LinkedIn, you would never sense that because there's so much activity happening. There's so much business happening. So uh, it's a really great place to be. Um, but the biggest reason I personally use LinkedIn, and I think biz small businesses would love this reason, is the fact that it is a business-to-business -business connection. So not only people are searching for other people, they're searching for people that can provide them a service. They're searching for products that can fill a service. Um, one kind of cool story that I had was I put a, a rhinoplasty surgeon on LinkedIn. And uh, I uh, he optimized his profile, and he got to the top of the rankings for nose jobs, for rhinoplasty, for all these different terms. Now, you wouldn't think, oh, people are going to search for that kind of service on LinkedIn. But within a couple of days, he had his first uh, client through it, and that's like a $12,000 client. <laughs> so uh, it was pretty pretty cool to see how the tool can be used even in businesses that you would think normally people wouldn't be using LinkedIn for. It just shows that there's searches for pretty much everything on uh, LinkedIn. As long as you so how, how do you get started on something like this? Okay, so yeah, so that's enough of the background and feel. Let's get into the nitty gritty. So to get started on LinkedIn, you, it's, it's easy. All you do is you sign up. I recommend that you prepare a few things before you're going to sign up. Um, you should have your resume, which should include like an introduction about yourself and your business, uh, your education, uh, companies that you worked for. The more companies that you can think of that you worked for, for example, as a consultant, I try to come up with every single client that I've worked with. I haven't done it quite yet, but um, I'm going to get there. <laughs> uh, so you want to come up with as many companies that you worked for in the past in that list for your resume, the more the merrier. Uh, another thing you want to do is uh, outline all the skills that you have. And you want to have a photo of yourself. It's really important to get a photo of yourself. Because one of the things, this is a social 
social site. So if uh, if you don't have a photo of yourself, and I'll put you, show you my photo. Um, if you don't have a photo of yourself, then people are going to be like, is this really a good profile? Is this a really is this person does this person really want to engage? So you want to show yourself and kind of put yourself out there so that people will feel comfortable engaging with you. Um, there was some stat that I heard actually that 50% of female uh, profiles that are on the web don't contain the real person. <laughs> so they contain like a cat photo or something like that, but they don't contain the real person. Well, that's a mistake. You have to, because you want to make that uh, personal connection level connection with the people that you're connecting to on LinkedIn. So use a real photo. Um, just, just so you know, most of my business comes from sites like LinkedIn and Twitter and Facebook. Um, and I use my photo on it uh, to make, basically let them feel that they've met me because I haven't met about 60% of my clients ever. And I've worked with some of these people for over 10 years. So having that photo uh, gives them uh, the sense that they've actually met me even though we might never meet. So that's, that's, the, that's the way things have become online. That <laughs> there's, there's now like a, you know, you might never meet the people that you work with, but uh, it's, it's, the, it's the new reality. So um, those are the things you need. And what you want to do now is, is actually get your profile optimized. So when you first start with uh, LinkedIn, you, you'll have a um, zero out of 100 score. That means that your, your profile is 0% complete out of 100%. Uh, so what you want to do is get to 100%. Once you get to 100%, actually above 80%, you're considered searchable on LinkedIn. So that's the first thing. You want to get to that 100% if possible. Um, the ways you get to 100% is if you add a photo, it's 5%. If you add one job, uh, past job work experience, it uh, it counts as 5%. If you add one educational background, it's 5%. If you add a recommendation, it's 5%. So it's very easy to get to that 100%. Uh, I think a summary is also 5%. So um, you know, it's easy to get to that point. Um, it's just a matter of filling out your profile. So another thing you want to make sure that you include in your profile is um, is a link to your website because your profile is not only a way to promote yourself, but you're going to be using it to promote your business. So what you want to do is have your website in there. Uh, Google is going to love you for that later. Okay? Um, there's a couple tricks when you do that. Um, I might be able to show it. Um, I just want to show you a cool little trick with um, when people put in your when you put in your website, uh, you can do it in such a way that, um, that you can make it keyword rich. Um, and there's a reason you do that uh, because those keywords will help you on Google. So what you do is instead of generally it'll say what's your website address, uh, and then instead of clicking that option, you actually uh, say you put other as the, because it will it'll default to saying um, your business or personal. But uh, what you want to do is actually have it say your keyword. For example, I would want mine to say uh, SEO consultant or SEO guru because those are the keywords that I'm targeting. So I, you can actually have your um, website link having those great keywords. So just a little tip. Uh, don't pick the default. Pick other, and then you can define what what that link is going to be called. It's just an important tip. Um, so, one of the first things that you once you finish your profile, that's that, that's just going to be the 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 basis for your uh, optimization. You're actually now going to fill it out a bit. <laughs> um, so, what you got to do is. You, what I always do is I go to Google AdWord tool, keyword tool, and I um, I do a quick a quick couple searches 
on the Google AdWord tool. And you can find that by just typing in keyword tool on Google. And what that does is it, it shows all of the exact number of searches that are happening for a particular keyword. So what I do is I come up with a keyword list, and those are the keywords that I'm going to be implanting into my profile. So you have your resume, but you're going to modify your resume now to make it keyword rich. Okay? Just, it's just like search engine optimization, but now you're, you're doing it for LinkedIn. And the way LinkedIn works is it's, it's a very basic search engine. So it looks at the number of times that the keyword appears in your profile. So the more times it appears, the, the higher you'll be ranked. Um, now the, the weird thing about that is if you spam it and you have keyword, 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 you will get banned on LinkedIn, just so you know. So don't do that. <laughs> but if you, um, if you kind of make it um, in a summary, then you're fine. Uh, Make sure that, that this is one of the reasons why I say put every job ex past experience that you have because that will give you areas of, uh, where you can put more and more keywords in. So the more, more places that you've worked for or the more experience that you, can that you can put in, the more places you can stuff in some keywords. And I hate to say stuff in keywords, but that's really what you're doing in this case. <laughs> um, one of the tricks that I did was uh, there's uh, LinkedIn will actually rank things based on elements of your profile a little bit more than other elements. So for example, you'll see that my name, my actual name, is not Alan Pollitt. It's Alan Pollitt SEO Guru, SEO Consultant. Because those are the keywords that I want people to find me on. So, uh, and SEO, I mean, that's the big keyword. Um, and then my, my my, my tagline is SEO consultant, SEO guru, SEO expert, SEO link builder, at Alan Pollitt. So that's my, that's my first – the way it works is uh, they take the very first uh, job experience to use to create that tagline. So you can get a lot of good keywords in there. <laughs> um, so I'm going to just show you how to do it inside a profile part. So Here's my job experience. Um, this my alanpollitt.com site. If you ever want to learn about SEO or LinkedIn or any social media stuff, you can go to alanpollitt.com. But this this business actually, I didn't have a website until my personal website. I was always marketing to other people until 2008, and I've now put this into my profile as, as, as a job experience. It's, it's, another, it's another site that I've developed. I've developed over 300 personally and over 2,000 for other people. Um, so it's, it's another site that I can put into my profile. And when I put it into my profile, I don't just say I built this site. I put in the keywords that, that I use when I'm doing that business. So if you, for example, for me, uh, it was SEO consultant, SEO guru. But, but for your business, it could be anything. It could be whatever keywords you think that people are going to search for, and you verify it through Google AdWord tool. Okay? And remember, when you're, you're, when you're targeting keywords on LinkedIn, it's always important to, think, to remember how people search on LinkedIn. They're searching for individuals, and they're searching for businesses, or they're searching for services. So what they're going to be doing is they're going to be looking for uh, SEO consultants, not SEO consulting, because they're actually looking for an individual. So remember that when you're, when you're coming up with your keywords, because it will impact how well you do on LinkedIn. You have to target the, the term that people would use if they're looking for a person. So that's why I would say SEO link builder instead of link building. Just to, something to be aware of when you're, when you're doing your optimization of your profile. So always think of the, the person. <laughs> the, other, uh, the other thing that you should consider is when you get recommendations, uh, scroll down to my recommendations, way down after all these crazy jobs that I've done. Um, when you get recommendations, always get uh, people to use the keywords in the recommendations. You'll see how 
I got uh, this Khan Mustafa to uh, recommend me with the great keywords because those also help uh, your rankings when you're targeting those keywords. Uh, so how do you get recommendations? Okay, so yeah, getting recommendations. Um, the best way to get recommendations is to actually recommend somebody else. So what I do is um, I recommend my friends first, people I know, uh, because um, you know I feel comfortable doing that. And um, generally, uh, if I recommend somebody I know, they'll recommend me back. And and they're also going to be willing to do it the way I want them to do it. So they'll rec they'll actually sometimes they'll tell me to write the recommendation themselves myself. Um, but uh, Generally, I want them to write it and uh, make it natural, but I, I tell them to put in a few keywords. <laughs> so uh, recommend other people, and um, you'll actually find that uh, once you're sort of popular on LinkedIn, you'll find that people are recommending you a lot, or you'll find that people are uh, requesting recommendations from you a lot. Um, it's always best to recommend somebody first than going out and asking for a recommendation. Because if you recommend them, if you ask for a recommendation, it's sort of like you know, ask, you know, you're not giving anything. You're just asking for stuff. And people always like it if you give a little to get a little. So it's always best practice to recommend other people and have them recommend you back. The, the way it works on LinkedIn is once I recommend you, you will at, you'll see the recommendation and you can approve it or uh, disallow it. I usually approve it. Um, as long as it's it's good recommendation, um, but then after that, you LinkedIn forces you to either write a recommendation back or to leave the system. But the point is, you it encourages you to recommend back. So that so it's always a, it's a, it's an easy way of getting people to recommend you. Just send out lots of recommendations, and you, you'll be surprised. You can actually get some really important people on the web to recommend you uh, if you uh, just send out, them, send out a recommendation to them. I've seen one of my clients, he was <laughs> he's doing really something funny with LinkedIn. Because everybody, everybody that's anybody is on LinkedIn in terms of business. Uh, you know, Steve Jobs was on here, Bill Gates. You, know, you can actually connect with some big players on LinkedIn. And my, one of my clients, what they were doing was they were connecting with every big player that they could think of. And they were actually getting recommendations from these big people as well, which is kind of cool when you know you get a recommendation from Bill Gates in your profile. It kind of holds a bit of weight. So um, yeah, he was uh, doing some funny things like that, and it really does work. So um, when you want to find any of these big players, you just you can just go into the people search, and you can search by people by name. So if I wanted uh, Bill Gates. <laughs> Uh, you can you can find you know Bill Gates. There's probably a few that are not really Bill Gates. There's other Bill Gates, but um, you can do a search and actually find some of these famous people within big companies. Um, what I always recommend is find uh, connections with people who are um, in a similar industry as you, or that you want to connect with that could be potential business uh, development for you. So. The second, and that brings me to the second part of optimization of your profile. Uh, if you do a really great job and you make yourself have your all your keywords within your profile, and you all of a sudden are at the top of the rankings. For example, if I type in SEO, uh, one second, you'll see that I'm high on the list. There's there's over how many thousand? Oh, almost. 600,000 people competing for the word SEO on LinkedIn, and I'm number four. But if you, on LinkedIn, the way it works is this. If I don't have any connections, nobody on LinkedIn will see me. The way, the way it works is it uses um, a, a degrees of separation idea that everybody in the world is connected through seven degrees of separation. Well, LinkedIn only uses three degrees of separation. So I know you, that's one degree of separation. Um, and that's my first level connections. The people that you know, 
become my second uh, level of connections. And the people that uh, they, that they know become my third degree of uh, connections. And what happens is if, if you um, search on LinkedIn, you can only see people within those first three levels of connections. So anyone beyond that uh, can't see you at all. So what you want to do is build as many connections as possible so that as many, so more and more people can see you. For example, um, I have 4,000 first level connections, which means I have 2 million second level connections, and my third level connections is pretty much everyone on LinkedIn. Um, so that means that I'm searchable by everyone. So not only am I fourth in, the, fourth in this list, but I'm fourth for everybody. So everybody can see me, which is kind of nice. Um, some people actually see me slightly higher in the list because they won't have some of the connections that I'm competing with above me. So that's actually even better. Um, so, so how do you build these connections is probably the question that's in your mind. Um, well, LinkedIn tries to make it pretty, pretty easy to do um, because they want to you know, encourage as many people to use LinkedIn as possible. So when you first actually sign up for LinkedIn, they will actually ask you to import from your email account all your addresses, all your email addresses. And I recommend that you do that because what it will do is it all of a sudden will seed your account with so many connections. So you can pull it in, and I'll show you that, Add Connections. So you go under Contacts, Add, Add Connections, and you'll see that you can pull it in from Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo Mail, or any mail. So even Outlook Express, you can pull it in from that. Um, and you can pull in all these contacts so that you have a b basic uh, level of contacts. When I did that, I didn't really have many contacts way back in the day. I had about 200 contacts. So when I first started my account, I had about 200 contacts. Um, now uh, I have other ways that I can pull in thousands of contacts. Um, the rule is with uh, LinkedIn, you only get 3,000 uh, 3, invites for uh, inviting people to connect with you on LinkedIn. So what you want to do is use as few of those as possible so that you can save them for later when you really want to connect with somebody. What you should do is always send out an email or a request to those people to connect with you so that they use their, one of their 3,000 connections rather than you using one of your 3,000 connections. So, what I do is um, I use another method of uh, actually creating connections. One of the ways that you can create connections, so you get the keep, you seed it with just your email. Uh, then you're going to go to over here. You go into groups. And what you want to do is search for lions. Just, um, and it, lion or lions. Actually, just search for LION. LION stands for LinkedIn Open Networkers. And these are all people, uh, open networkers, somebody who wants to connect with anybody. And again, it's all about being visible on LinkedIn. The more people that you're connected to, the more people that can see you. So what you want to do is be connected with as many people as possible. Well, these people know that too. And they're trying to connect with as many people as possible. So what you can do is you can join these groups. So I just click Join. And you can now you're all of a sudden part of that group. The cool thing is, each of these lion groups allows you to post your um, uh, allows you to post your profile on it or your email address on it, and as a welcome message. So what happens is all the other members of these groups will will connect with you. And when I did it for the first time, I get about a thousand connections just from posting my uh, email address on the welcome page of these Lions groups. I, I, connected, I joined about uh, 10 of them at the time. I, I don't think I'm still members of all of them, but, um, but I did uh, connect, get a lot of connections that way. Um, you can also, there's actually people out there that will also sell you their contact lists. So you can do a few searches on Google, and you can actually find people that are willing to sell you a contact list. And you can buy those fairly inexpensively. Um, and you can actually import a list of people who are um, willing to connect on LinkedIn. 
what I do uh, with my clients is actually I sell lists which are lists of power connectors. So what I do is I try to find people who have like two, three thousand first level connections, and then I just make a core list of that that group because I know that just getting one of those power connectors could mean a million new connections. So my goal is to get as many of those power people on my list of connections so that I can get as many people to see me as possible. Um, so usually what I do for clients is I see their accounts with a thousand power connectors and then I know that they're going to be pretty much visible to everybody on LinkedIn. Okay. So um, those are the, some of the things to optimize your profile and really build your visibility on LinkedIn. Is there any uh, other I, neat tools that you can use on LinkedIn? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so one of the things that you can do is you can use um, – LinkedIn is all about trying to create business on, um, for, for its users. It's all about trying to create business pr presentations. And some of the things that they do for that is they allow you to um, create uh, – use add-ons within your profile. So let me just show you that. Uh, I think if you click View Profile and Edit Profile, sorry. Um, and then right here you'll see New, Add Sections to Reflect your Achievements and Experience on your profile. If you click Add Sections, you can use a whole bunch of um, enhanced features within LinkedIn. Uh, for example, you can add your certifications, courses, honors, and so forth. But if you scroll down, you can start adding in um, some more cool things like events, Google presentations. The ones that I – SlideShare is a really useful one where you can actually create a visual presentation on LinkedIn, which is really great. Um, another thing you can do is um, back in Home. If you click Home, uh, you can do status updates. So when you do a status update, you can actually include a link and you can put videos in there, which is kind of nice. So you can actually include a link to a video or a link to your website or some, something which encourages people to um, take more interest in your profile over somebody else's profile. So if they, they come to your profile and there's a video there or there's some images there, it becomes a much more interesting thing to, um, to view than if it's just a basic resume. So adding those slide shares, uh, adding the Google presentations, all these things really make your profile shine. I added my WordPress blog to my, um, to my uh, LinkedIn profile so that every time I update my blog, it updates my LinkedIn profile. So it's, an, it's another way of making your profile more engaging. Uh, you want to really stand out because there's a lot of people on LinkedIn and you want to make yourself look like the best of those people. Um, I really recommend using the status update though because what happens is if you update your status, everybody that is connected to you will see that update. So it's a way of pinging all the people that you're connected to. Uh, they don't get an email about it, but they do see it in their, their profiles that you've updated. Um, and it's a nice way of just kind of keeping people engaged with you. Um, I found that there was people that I had connected with in the past that I really liked, but it just, you know, you lose contact for whatever reason. Well, this way it, you keep in contact with those people uh, and you remind them of some of the cool stuff that you're doing. Um, what I will do is whenever I have a new product or something interesting is happening in the industry, I'll, I'll do a status update to sort of remind them, hey, you, you might want to use me for this service. And a lot of people, they'll say, oh, I didn't realize you could even do that. And they'll, they'll use me for that new, uh, that new idea that I put out on my status up. So um, these are all tricks that you can do. Um, another thing that you uh, can use on LinkedIn is some of the basic features, which are groups as a way of connecting with people. Uh, and engaging new people that you might not know any other way. Um, groups are great because what you can do 
is you can search for groups that are relevant to you. Um, for example, let's say we want to find business um, coaches. Okay, that might be that might appeal to you. <laughs> um, business coach. Okay, so what you'll find once it loads um, is you'll find a whole bunch of groups, and there's there's going to be a bunch. There's 385 groups that are just devoted to business coaching. Uh, and then you can join these, and what happens is they'll share leads. Um, I found that just by joining some group, they might have somebody that uh, is, a, is a potential client, but they can't service that client, maybe because of location or, or they just overwhelm. They have too many leads themselves, and they just they'll give them to other group members. So it's a really great way to get some business contacts and some business leads, is to join some groups that are talking about whatever niche that is that you do. Um, and you can always post on to these groups. Um, one of the groups that I joined was a public speaking group uh, because uh, that group allows me to find opportunities to speak at events and promote my business, which is, which is great. Um, and they're always looking for people. There's actually certain groups that uh, they will help you. Uh, that they'll help you actually find uh, uh, ways to get into newspapers and television, because what they want to do is they want to find businesses that will um, be able to talk about a specific subject. Uh, many news organizations they need people to to give a good case example of something that they're trying to write a story on. So they'll actually look for people, look for businesses that can, you know, come on their show, or come in, or, or be interviewed for an article, and they actually use LinkedIn groups to find those people. So there's some really cool groups out there, and I recommend that you do a few searches on groups, and you can find ways to get free press for your uh, company, and you can find ways to connect with people who are of like mind and you can learn from them and you can also find clients from from LinkedIn because a lot Is of there any risk in not okay. accepting or in connecting with the wrong type of people or is there any time that you shouldn't connect with someone? Um personally I connect with everyone. Um I've even I've even connected with um accounts that I know are not legitimate accounts where people can create fake accounts on LinkedIn. But the thing is, by connecting with them, if they ask to connect with you, um, you're still gaining connections. <laughs> it just so there's no there's no disadvantage to connecting with everyone on LinkedIn. Um, there's just so much upside to it. Um, and another thing is, um, most people on LinkedIn there's very little spam. Um, it's not like Twitter where once you connect with people, you're going to get like a whole bunch of tweets from that person. Um, it's it's much more controlled, and the people, the behavior on uh, LinkedIn is much more controlled. Even even the spammers are well-behaved spammers, I guess is the way to say it. But uh, so it's 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 an interesting group. Um, so there's no disadvantage to connecting with people. Now, I saw when you were looking at the groups, there's something called answers. Could you explain what that is? Okay, yeah. Another trick uh, that I use uh, to, um, to uh, get business leads is I use LinkedIn's answers. And this is where pro professionals are asking a question. Uh, for example, this person is asking a question about Google Calendar. And you might sell a product that actually fills, basically is the answer for it. Um, what, what I do is I, I'll actually go through these questions sometimes. Uh, you can do searches within answers for questions that are relevant to your business. So, uh, so if there's questions on web marketing or SEO, I can go in and find those questions and people might be having a problem. Maybe their site might be not ranked, or they might have an issue with with marketing. And you can answer their question and really become a guru for them. And they'll actually sometimes become a client for you. So if you have a product where somebody's asking a question about it, you can answer it, and 
if they choose your answer as the best, it actually promotes it not just to that person, but everyone that reads these answers. Uh, and a lot of people will read the answers. It's, so it's, it's a really great way to uh, engage with people and take advantage of people that are actually looking for your product or service. Uh, one thing that I do is I'll actually ask questions. Uh, and what I do is ask kind of a, I, generally kind of a dumb question. Um, not to sound dumb, but to really engage people. What I'll do is I'll ask a question like, um, are, my, are my services priced too, too inexpensively? Uh, and what I'll do is then list out my services and say, you know, should I charge a lot more for this? And, <laughs> and what that does is it engages people to, say, to evaluate my services. And if you, you, you kind of say you do a lot of stuff, and they see the value in it, well, they might even become clients from it just by answering the question. Uh, so, and they'll say, well, yeah, you are priced too cheaply. <laughs> I, I should probably use your service. Um, so it's, it's a great way of engaging people. Um, if you ask a simple question that more and more people can a answer. And when you ask questions on LinkedIn, it also gives you an opportunity to um, connect with the people on your connection list. So everybody on LinkedIn can see the question, but you can also send it directly as an email to anybody on your contact list. So um, they, they do it in 200 um, member increments. So what you can do is pick people that are very specific to the type of question you're asking, and you can put the question out to them. And generally the response rate, because it is business to business, uh, is very high. So if you send it out to 200 people, you're probably going to get most of those 200 people actually looking at the question. So if you ask a very intelligent but maybe simple, <laughs> so a little bit playing dumb, but uh, question, you'll actually get a really good response rate and you can engage a lot of people that might have sort of forgotten about you. Um, so it's a really good little trick to use. Um, the other thing that, um, that I do, like because the answers are limited to 200 people. What I want to do is I have 4,000 first level connections. Well, what I do is I actually take those connections out of LinkedIn. And what you can do, uh, if you click on connections, uh, you can actually export your connections, which is really cool. What you can do is um, I export my connections from LinkedIn and then what I do is I import those connections into like MailChimp or Constant Contact, and now I have a mailing list. So as I said, it's really easy to build a list of contacts on LinkedIn, and then, then you can use that for um, basically doing mailouts, um, encouraging um, people to uh, you know, consider your product, uh, educate people, make them feel like, comfortable with you, make them want to do business with you. Um, it's a really great way to do that. So uh, it allows you to export only your first level connections, just so you know, but at least you can email them all, all at once. And if you use like MailChimp or Constant Contact, you can do that. Um, and uh, you know, it's, it's a really great, great tool for that, that you can basically build a contact list quick, quickly, and then you can export it to something else where you can then use it as a mailing list. Um, and I remember back in the day where they would say that every member on your mailing list is worth like $100. So if you can build uh, a few thousand connections on LinkedIn relatively cheaply, well then you have a list that's worth <laughs> thousands and thousands of dollars. So it's a, oh, it's a pretty great tool. This has been great, Alan. I guess the big thing has been just like how to set up your profile, how to optimize it, and then how to build connections. So. Like I said, I used this yesterday, and already I'm seeing an impact. So it's pretty great. I'm glad. Yeah, I'm glad that you <laughs> that you got uh, something from it. I mean, it, it is a really cool tool. Uh, you know, just by putting those keywords in, I, I, I hope that you're getting new business from it. Um, I imagine more people are viewing your profile. Have you seen? Well, it? I already got a bunch of profile? new contacts actually in the last 24 hours. So it's been great. Oh, cool. Yeah, oh, that's great. That's great. That's what I wanted to hear. You know. 